Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new Fallout 76 camp build. We are in Skyline Valley once again, as you can probably tell from the lighting, because I'm quite enjoying having this new area to build in, it's been good fun lately. And uh, we have built a little kind of fisherman's shack kind of getaway vibe here, which has come together quite nicely I think. So, looking at the map, as you can see we are all the way down the bottom of Skyline Valley here, about as, uh, well, not as far south as you can get, but getting there. See that tiny little pond there on the map? That's actually where we are, because that's always the map markers a little bit uh, all over the place. But you get the gist. Yeah, nice little spots. Not massively flat around here, so definitely warranting small builds, I think, rather than large ones, but that's generally the way anyway. So, right, first thing we want to do, for the sake of this building part, is uh, get a clear weather machine in there and clear it up so I can see what I'm doing. And perhaps more importantly, so you guys can see what I'm doing under the circumstances. So, grabbing the Ohio River Adventure docks. Now, uh, these things are pretty nice. They are something we definitely needed in the um, sort of toolbox. I'm quite happy to have them. They're quite flexible, although there's a few bits that would be nice on there, like a T-shaped bit and a short piece with a sort of double-ended one, as opposed to the short piece we have, which is single-ended. But um, otherwise, it's reasonably forgiving and quite handy. I do wish they sort of bits of wood that stick up, the, the legs I suppose, were uh, a little bit more forgiving with their clipping as well, but uh, they are forgiving in some ways these things, so that's quite handy as we'll see in a moment. But I'm going to notch this over a little further to the left here, make sure it's kind of flush with the ground now, looks like it's been here a while, and uh, just get this lined up a little bit better with the lay of the land here. Make sure we've got a bit more room at the back there to squeeze in my hut as well. Looks pretty good to me. So, and grab a foundation and as you can see I can put the foundation on top of the dock and have it sink in just fine which is a, a nice little discovery. Stairs unfortunately are not quite so cooperative so that's a whole factor to keep in mind but the foundations work so we can kind of tie the whole build together quite nicely in that way. So I'm going to pull this further a little further forward and dodge the rad stag and just tweak the angle a little bit so that it kind of comes together a little bit better and looks better as you approach it from the road, seeing as there's that little pathway in front of us there. And that looks pretty good to me. Just going to check I can get this wooden foundation in all the way around. I can, because I want to double-side the walls on this one. Kind of turned out we didn't need to do that because I put vines on them anyway, but it worked quite nicely here for adding a little bit of extra texture. So we're going to grab the abundant mine kit, and she use the plain doors and they'll go nicely back to back as long as you've got a foundation either side there. And we just build up two walls. So I could put wallpaper on the outside if I wanted to. I don't, but I do want to put a second wall and change the textures available. So it should work quite nicely and means I don't have to have massive holes in the uh, structure as well. So quite happy with that. For the actually functional door and window though, we'll just keep those single sided. Took a staircase in for now, even though we're going to be modifying the front end in a bit. Make our way around the sides. So, we're just going to hit the swap replace option here. Just swap this wall out here for this one that's kind of open at one end and sealed at the other. Then we'll have them join in the middle and open towards the outer edges. Just go all the way around repeating this. And we'll have a nice kind of double layered, textured kind of 3D surface, or slightly more 3D surface. And we'll come back around later, off camera incidentally, and change the internal walls for just solid wall pieces. And we don't have big holes in our walls. It looks cool. So, we're going to get a roof on this thing next. I'm going to use these grass roofs that came from the last season. I didn't pick up the building set, which was a kind of grubby um, log cabin set kind of came, not exactly with these, but alongside these roof pieces, but it was the roofs I really wanted, and uh, they go quite nicely on this, so yeah, quite pleased with that. Get these gaps plugged up. Because we've got double-sided walls at the back, we do need to be careful to make sure that these triangle pieces go in the right way around. As you can see there, it's trying to go the wrong way. But uh, we'll flip it around and sort it. Not a problem on the front, because they're only single skin walls. Nice. So, that looks all right. It's kind of boxy though, which, given that I want it to look realistic, is kind of a strong starting point, even though I'd normally kind of try and steer away from it. Let's make it a little bit more interesting and extend the roof out forward there. The grass alone makes it feel less boxy on it, just uh, by dint of the extra texture up there. 
So, got that extended out. I tried a few bits and pieces to see how I wanted to support this, and just in the end, settled on um, a simple sort of bespoke porch, I guess. So we've got a couple of foundations in there, and we're going to grab these pavilion walls. We're going to go for the ones with the railings on, and just put these in, because they go really nicely with the abandoned mine set. They're kind of the same texture, more or less, even though they're not part of the same set. These were a season reward, I believe. But it makes for a nice kind of... Um, continuation of the build and adds a little porch area so it's not quite so much of a, a box i mean it still kind of is but it's a more interesting looking box <laughs> so we're going to close up this front edge that's one thing the pavilion is absolutely missing that and uh, sloped roofs it doesn't have those either which is kind of annoying but yeah the other thing that's slightly awkward here is say the stairs won't clip through the docks here so that's slightly inconvenient. I'll say you the stairs, that specific set wide. Most of the others don't seem to have too much of an issue. Don't seem to, anyway. So we're going to grab the uh, broken set, which came along with the uh, broken destroyed camp kit, which I think was another season reward, actually. Probably appear in the atomic shop if you want to pick it up at some point, though. And there we go. All comes together quite nicely. So this is why I didn't really need to double skin those walls, because um, I'm going to cover them up anyway. I'm actually going to use the heavy vines for this, but uh, if you don't have the vines, then the double skinning is probably not a bad idea. And, um, you know, it's, it's extra detail and texture anyway. And I've got plenty of budget, so it's not a problem. But I'm going to use the heavy vines specifically, because the other ones, for the most part, just a little look a little bit too thin and wispy. And not quite enough detail on them, so... We use the heavy ones around the main part of the house. And then for some of these other areas, we'll swap them out for slightly lighter ones. I think we'll go for the medium ones for the rest of it. But I'm going to put some Haunted House window boards over this first because we don't have any glass in that particular window. Which is slightly unfortunate when we come to decorate because especially when I put wallpaper on it, it kind of really looks like it should have glass in it. Uh, in hindsight, I'm thinking maybe, uh, we'll see this in the tour in a minute anyway, but I think maybe I should have doubled up those window boards. Hmm. I don't know, maybe one to do feel like it in future. But, to put the last couple of vines around the porch here, just to continue the look. You don't really have to do this. It's uh, some debate as to whether or not it looks better, I suppose. But uh, I decided to go for it. And in this case, I'm going to use the medium thickness vines, because I want to be able to see through it reasonably clearly, but I also want to be able to see the vines. And the, the light ones really just... they're all, almost invisible, so... If the medium ones, we get a, well, a happy medium, really. Which is just what you want when you're speaking to spirits. So there we go. Well, that is our core structure done. Now we just need to add somewhere to put my crafting benches. I had originally thought, well, maybe I'll just go with the shelter and uh, not have the crafting benches out here, but that drives me nuts. So we're putting in a little pavilion on the side here to uh, house the crafting benches. And it looks like it belongs when it's done. I'm kind of eyeballing exactly where I want this to go. And there's a bit of trial and error to kind of make sure it looks right in relation to the house, shack, whatever you want to call it and the dock there, but also to kind of be a standalone structure at the same time. A bounce to be struck there. I want to move it over a little bit further. Obviously with the ground being not particularly flat here, it's a bit of a challenge. I don't really want too much of the sides of the foundation showing if I can avoid it. So we'll dip this down a little bit, but I also don't want it clipping through the ground too much. So Happy medium seems to be the uh, order of the day here. Well, there we go, I think that looks alright. We'll get some pavilion walls on here. And I use the term walls very, very loosely. Railings. Yeah, I suppose that works. Frames. <laughs> I had thought about having the entire front half of this sort of open rather than railed off, but ended up needing the space. So, set the railings on there. Put some extra ones on just to kind of get that completed look. Some in the middle. Just to give it, uh, again, a bit more of a, a solid vibe. I do wish you could double up these... Um, sort of uh, posts without the railings because it would go quite nicely in there but uh, unfortunately they're slightly off kilter because I can't do that still you have to look closely to see it but there we go that's our structures done so I think it's about time I stuck a couple of stairs on the front here and uh, spent a little while decorating this thing so I will see you in the tour in just a second and voila <laughs> One finished little fishing cabin camp down by a nice little pond in the middle of a national park, and that kind of makes sense to me. I look like the head cannon for that. Somebody's come along and found it post-war and gone, well, it's shelter, isn't it? 
Though the canoe there is uh, a little bit superfluous. The pond is way too small for canoeing on, and to be honest, there's the creek behind, but uh, you know, it kind of complements the build a little bit, I think. A few boxes and lobster pots and stuff on there. I do wish we had a few more kind of wooden crates that match the style there. I mean, they're in the game and they're in Fallout 4, if you've got mods anyway, but they're not available to us here in 76, unfortunately. So, let's have a little look at my crafting area, and squeezing everything in here ended up being a bit difficult, mostly because of the choice I made in terms of a weapons workbench, it takes up a lot of room, but I don't use that very often, so it's kind of fun. I've squeezed everything in, and a bit of decoration detail as well. Not gone overboard, but it looks pretty complete. All my uh, essentials there, stash boxes, scrap box, ammo box, all where they're easily reachable, which is always convenient, because it's kind of the first thing you want to visit on return to your camp, really. All the necessary workbenches, I could have skipped over the brewing station, but I had just about enough room to squeeze everything in, so look, why not? There's my weapons bench of the pack, the blacksmith one, armor one tucked in. I'd like to an armor bench that uh, I could have tucked a little bit further back, really, but yeah. I keep saying, when I want more options and variations on the workbenches. And especially the weapons and armor benches, that sort of thing. But yeah, quite happy with what I managed to pull together here. Definitely looking all right. As you see, that pond is really quite small. <laughs> Don't even know if it would have any fish in it, to be honest, unless they were sort of added by uh, the hand of man, as it were. But... Maybe there are some in there. Or maybe catching fish isn't the pot. Who knows? So, we'll swing around the back here and have a look at some of the uh, sort of more functional elements. Because, well, if this is going to be a player camp, there's certain things it needs. Somewhere to produce food and Electron, because I need a Nuka Cola. Because apparently, Fizzy Pop in this game go world, whatever, goes bang. Which is actually not that far from the real world either when you think about it, but still. I think the shower might possibly be in the wrong place, though, what with it being right next to the electronic equipment, but, eh, it'll be fine. Or it won't, one or the other. <laughs> Shelter tucked in at the back, just hidden behind the shrubbery. I'm quite happy to have the symptomatic in there. I've done a few builds recently without it, and uh, I've started including it again, because it's just, it doesn't quite look like it belongs, really, but it is such a convenient thing to have. Unfortunately, that collection is actually if it's a slightly floaty, which I didn't notice initially. I'll have to uh, either take steps to hide it or uh, either maybe live with it or move it. We'll see. I might fine-tune this at some point. But on the whole, I'm quite happy with uh, the look of it. It looks like something that you could have stumbled across that was here in the National Park all along, you know? Just the vibe I was going for. We'll take a little look at our cosy little cabin. I was tempted to go for a really rustic, tumble-down post-war vibe initially, but then I ended up going kind of a bit more cosy on the inside, mostly because of the fireplace, which I'll we'll talk about in just a second. Yeah, um, the end result's pretty good. The kitchen did have a lot to do with my decision-making as well. Yeah, squeeze my little uh, vendor station in there as well. Just put the vendor on the table. Subtle, understated, but there and easy to access for anybody who needs it. We'll take a little look inside. There we go. One cozy little home. I do quite like how uh, comfortable this looks. It's not exactly, uh, you know, overdone, but it's nice, cozy, comfortable. Nice little uh, retreat from the world vibe, which is what I wanted to achieve with it. So speaking of this fireplace, to get this in the way I wanted to, I had to basically take the whole back wall and back two sections of roof off the camp. <laughs> off the building because the fireplace needed to kind of clip through the wall in order to not take up too much room inside the house it sticks out quite a long way so i took everything off and pushed it a bit further back then i put the extension section on top and put two red barrels on the top of it just to kind of simulate chimney pots can't really see them from the ground but i know they're there and then uh, I turned the flamethrower trap on the fireplace and then just rebuilt all the walls and the roof. And that all went together quite nicely, snapped into place, and then repaired it all. And we have a completed uh, project. There was a lot of flamethrower use in here, actually, because uh, stuff's quite closely fitted together. So making everything work just right needed a little bit of persuasion. I was quite happy with it. The fridge needed to sit very close to the kitchen and uh, get in the stash box next to the fridge as well it was definitely a tight squeeze but yeah happy with that 
couple of tricks in this design of the kitchen that I've used in previous camps. A more beaten up version of this kitchen would be nice, as well as, there's the, a working cooking station that snaps into it alongside everything else. We've got a sink and need a cooking station now, because then we'll have the match set. Yes, anyway. For now, I've got Yasmin's cooking station just squeezed in there, as I usually do. I used the chessboard displays from the last season and merged those into the worktops in a couple of places so that I could have um, a cup and a, a pan just sat on the side there. It looks pretty good. The same for the pillows on the bed there. Well, that's for a little bit of surface decoration. That's quite a handy little trick, that. Not currently available. Um, I'll stick a link to a video that show you how to use it, but keep an eye out on the Atomic Shop if you didn't get a chance to pick that up, because it's very, very handy. I do like having the steins up on the top of the uh, cupboards there as well. So I'll spot some pans at top. Quite happy. Comfy, cosy. Love the uh, grandfather clock. That's something I've always wanted is a grandfather clock. Can't have one in IRL, unfortunately. But at least I can have one in game, eh? And there we go. Not really the right door for their job either. I wanted a different door, but the one I had my eye on, unfortunately, opened the wrong way. So that was uh, kind of a no-go, really. Still... I'm quite happy with this. There we go. One little uh, fisherman's cabin that kind of looks like it belongs in the uh, National Park vibe of uh, Skyline Valley. Hope you folks enjoyed. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. I very much appreciate. Social media links, merch store, notification bell, channel memberships, all that good stuff down below if you want to support the channel that way. I really, really appreciate. Massively helps out. And if you get a chance, join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76, having a good time in Skyline Valley. And we're playing Fallout 4 at the moment. We've got Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl on the go as well. And a whole bunch of other stuff happening over the course of the summer. So lots to keep an eye out for. And uh, tons more camp stuff if you want to have a look around the channel too. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.